around us. It just saturates the media. Uh, I know there's so many times where I just don't want to hear it anymore at all. Even though I try to detach myself from the, uh, from the energy of that heavy fear blanket, and, but more just, just try to be aware of what's going on. And there is a difference. And I think that's, that's something that uh, is a good way to discriminate against uh, being addicted to all the bad news, which I think a, a lot of people are, and, uh, but, but very importantly, being part of the informed citizenry that's critical to what we need to do and what we're here to talk about. Okay, so we've observed these last uh, few weeks and few days, you know, our, our economic and political structures have failed us, miserably failed us. And those, those structures have been polluted. They've been polluted by greed. They've been polluted by, by vested interests that have way too much influence on policy. And that they've been polluted by power lust. You know, and I know the citizens in my country, and I'm sure here in Canada as well, are outraged at what has been going on, that the public trust has been violated in such an overt and uh, just unseemly manner. Well, the public's crying out for change in leadership. But that cry for change needs to be for wise leadership, not just a change. It needs to be for, for wise leadership, visionary leadership. And in, in, our, in our book, Breakthrough Power, and in the messages that, that Gene and I deliver in our address to citizens uh, in gatherings uh, such as these, you know, there, there is a message that, that we repeat consistently. And it's that the single most highly leveraged opportunity we have to make advancement towards solving complex global problems lies in a transformation in the way humanity generates and utilizes energy. It's a mouthful. I know that. But if you examine it closely, you find that energy is it, it pervades every aspect of our life, from food production to transportation to why we have uh, military forces to our geopolitical structures and positioning. It's, it's everywhere we look. And so, so if, if we're envisioning this world that we want, and it's clearly not coming about from our current policies, we need to make changes not just in those policies, but in the foundation that underlies them. And that foundation is the energy market itself. So when we look at the energy market, what do we see? What do we see with our current policies? Again, we see a structure that has failed us. And for the same exact reasons that the political and, and the economic structures have failed us. It's been greed, it's been undue vested interest, and it's been power lust. And those are all understandable because we all have our own vested interest tendencies. We all have a personal stake in something that we feel is so important that we, we sometimes exert our will on others. So we all can understand this as humans that this has been going on. But as conscious humans, we also know we can make a choice to rise to something better. And we're not looking for, for uh, retaliation, retribution, or vengeance. What we do want to have is a cooperative effort including with those who may have been oppressive and ask them to join us in the cause for a new tidal wave of wisdom to bring tremendous changes to this planet. We need an urgent change in the energy direction. We need a change in policy, not just putting lipstick on dirty coal and calling it clean coal. <laughs> So some of you have been following what's going on down south. Okay, but we, we do need truly non-polluting technologies. Not nuclear technologies that have been <laughs> spoken about enthusiastically again and again by the two leading presidential candidates uh, in the US because that's not going to get us where we need to go. It's not the world that we envision to simply pass off toxic radioactive waste to these future generations. That's not the world that, that, that I want. I don't want that for my children or grandchildren nor for yours. So, so wise leadership needs to wake up and realize that that should not even be an option on the table. What about 
a massive investment in the research and development and deployment of breakthrough energy technologies. A massive investment. Well, what are we doing instead? There's a call for more oil drilling. How does that get us the world that we want? Why is it that one of the leading candidates, in this case, uh, Senator Obama, he says, well, get this, I'm going to invest $15 billion over the next 10 years to invest in, in renewable energy technologies. $15 billion over 10 years. Sounds like a lot. Well, guess what? The U.S. spends $15, billions, uh, $15 billion every six weeks in Iraq. We've been doing that for five years, and, and it looks like we're going to keep doing it for, for at least the, the near foreseeable future. All right, where are the priorities? How is that wise leadership? How does that get us the world that we want? We have uh, the citizens of my country now just been saddled with a near $1 trillion obligation to bail out Wall Street and banks. Now, how is it that we, we can fund all of these massive investments in war and massive bailout for irresponsible and greedy behavior when we haven't been able to allocate a small fraction of that to what is in the best interest of our planet? How is that possible? It's because there's a profound lack of wisdom, a profound lack of leadership. And we cannot expect the leadership that we seek to come from the politics as usual. It's not going to happen. That's why it's so important for us to have the leaders come from average, everyday citizens like each of us gathered here. And that's my call to each of us. So Gene and I and, and our, our wonderful group of inventors here who, who are joining us to deliver a message have hope that we are offering to you here tonight and going forward. And that hope is not, is not idle, it's not starry-eyed, it's real because the technologies behind this are real and each of these inventors are going to have a chance to to give you their own personal perspective on that so with 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 a very real basis and technologies that are the platform for revolutionary change in energy it means we can transform a world that's plagued by fear it's it's has resource scarcity uh, in the minds of people everywhere uh, it, it, it has us looking at an environment that's in devastating decline. I heard the other day that one quarter of the planet's mammals are endangered, and virtually all, all the primates as well. Well, you know, when that's happening, we're endangering ourselves as well. Well, we can transform that world to one that's healthier, cleaner, happier for all of us. It's based on shared abundance. It's based on cooperation, and it results in peace, real peace, not truce, because all that we've had uh, for, for as, long as, as, as long as I've been alive, and I think probably for all of humanity, all that we've ever really had is truce. Because with truce, the arms are always kept at the ready. Real peace, the arms no longer are required. And that's a real distinction I'd like to make. I want to give you two quick examples of why this is real. Forgive me for going over my time here. <laughs> All right, one of these is a, a, a fascinating technology, and it was actually featured on one of the slides here by a company called Blacklight Power, uh, the brainchild of a genius inventor and scientist named Dr. Randall Mills. And Dr. Mills has invented this process he calls the black light process that really breaks new ground in physics. And, and what it does is it, it, it basically is a reaction between hydrogen and a very common metal that acts as a catalyst. When these react under heated conditions, there's a, a tremendous change that happens in the hydrogen, something previously thought impossible. The, the hydrogen atom itself actually shrinks. 
And I'm not going to go into the technical detail of the chemistry of that. But when that happens, when that atom shrinks, it releases a tremendous amount of energy. And this was thought impossible from, from the laws of quantum physics. So there's a lot, a lot of physicists who thought this was ridiculous, what, what Dr. Mills has discovered. 